It's the, the fable of the sun and the wind. You can fucking blow as hard as you can and just keep screaming down the fucking, the barrel of the gun and it ain't gonna change shit. But if you shine and you show people compassion and you listen and you have an open heart, then maybe that connection will be made. Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemies In Conversation. We're here today, Joe from Idols. All right. How you doing, man? I'm hot. Um, I've worn lots of woolly stuff for an indoor interview. Yeah. Well, you just... I'm not know. taking it off either, because I'm balding and fat. But you would wear mohair, which I've just learned is made of... Goats. Goat hair. Yeah. Apparently, I mean, I might be wrong. <laughs> I told you that as a fact, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got this thing where... Um, when I say things with authority, people believe me. I mean, Goals. not just this is not just because I'm in a band or whatever. I say shit, and people walk away like, "Wow." <laughs> I don't know why I'm convincing like that. I'm basically like a very cheap think tank, yeah. you know, where I just make shit up and then tell people. Very cheap think like, tank. That'd be a good album name too. <laughs> a very cheap. <laughs> very cheap think tank. <laughs> yeah, it's a very mid two thousands band name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're here to celebrate the release of. <laughs> moderately priced, well thought out tank. Oh, that was so tenuous. Wait, man. wait, <laughs> mo moderately priced? You fuckers are getting it for free. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's, let's cut that out. <laughs> we'll just call it tank. tank. <laughs> Don't um, cut it out. <laughs> but that's uh, arriving Valentine's Day week. Is it? Yeah. Which seems Sick. quite fitting because it's, uh, a, it's a love album full of love, right? Yeah. I don't know if that was on purpose. I don't know. You'd have to ask Partisan Records. Yeah. Maybe it was. They like puns and that. Yeah. People, yeah. don't they? Love is the thing on a, on a Valentine's Day card. I can see it. Yeah, I'm on a, I think I'm on a Valentine's Day card. Yeah. I fucking love you. Yeah. And it's me, like, with a horrible stage face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mixed messages. <laughs> yeah. Tragic. But yeah, so uh, a record um, driven by love. And last time we spoke was just before Dancer came out and he spoke about how it was quite intentional where you turned to Bowen and said, I need to make a record where people experience the love that I, I need in my life. I mean, what can you tell us about that, that gap after Crawler where what you were working through and what you wanted to kind of manifest in the music? I guess it's a, it's a thing like I started therapizing again you know and um what you need to do often is is nominate your need in a relationship whatever that is and at the time it was myself mm. i was starting to go through the same fucking bullshit cycles of behavior and um i wanted to stop it and it, it it's surprising how much more it takes than i think yeah to break those cycles. So um, I looked within and I found that I needed love. I understood that writing love songs, seemingly it's been done, you know, mm. but it hasn't for me, so I don't fucking care. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm interested in showing the different facets uh, of love that are not so conventional, but very fucking important. Mm. Empathy, patience, honesty, communion, hard work, and recovery, forgiveness. Uh, so yeah, that's what I wrote about. Yeah. I'm still there, I'm still gonna need to go through it, and I'm still very much interested in writing about love forevermore. Yeah. That might not be the case, I might change my mind and write about mohair, <laughs> but for now it's love. I find it fascinating and empowering and interesting. Yeah, you finding it more interesting than when you were kind of wearing your anger and your rage on your sleeve a bit? I was not wearing anger on my sleeve. Mm. I was wearing a passion and a violence on my sleeve. The anger was what I realised was putting me in very bad places. I wasn't holding myself accountable for the things I was doing. And I needed to create a new avenue in which to heal and better myself mm. so i started a band people misread it as anger and they like to write about it as anger because it's easy yeah it's not anger it's violence 
it's a brush stroke, it's a cadence, it's a tone, it's a fucking guitar sound. It sounds angry if you just, you know. And I get that people do that because I was presenting it as very basic and simple because I wanted to uh, address complex issues with a sense of compassion and simplicity, which is the human condition, is very complex, but you know, the basic needs and the shit, when you really talk about it, are quite simple. Yeah. When you get to the crux of that, you can start you know, making a change on your relationships, who you vote for, the drugs you take, the drugs you don't take, etc. Um, but I know, you know, because I shouted, it was easily pigeonholed and that's no fault but my own. Well, that's it. You were shouting, I fucking love you at the same time. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously the complexities were there for me. And I tried to talk about it. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. That's why I'm still here working at it. But yeah, for me, it's always about the human condition and wanting to connect to something bigger than myself. That's all it's ever been. But that applies to the sound too. I mean, especially on this record, it's too much of an oversimplification to just say, oh, Idols are a punk band. Which is why I found it really interesting that um, you work with LCD Sound Systems. They've got a similar thing where people would say, oh, they're dance punk. And you're like, you're also like punk that people can dance to is what people would say. But the truth is, you similarly come from a place of such an amazing amalgamation of different influences. Mm. And you end up just making a racket that people can move to. Yeah. And that's not dance, it's not punk, it's it's, its own beast, right? Well, it's just um, joy, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, I think mo mo most musicians want the same thing. There's a lot of, um, you know, artists are often people with delicate egos and they either use art to break it down and to show themselves bare or to build up a really beautiful shield and a mask and create a different kind of conversation, but it's always around existential growth. Yeah. Normally, I mean, unless it's vapid music, which is, again, fine. I'm not here to bark at anyone. But my interest is about having a connection to the universe. It sounds wanky, but it's true. I was, when I started the band, I was very lonely and scared. And I wanted to build something that I could feel safe in. There's an energy created in a room when everyone just connects and dances to the same beat. Yeah. It's fucking magic. But you saw that, I mean, you and LCD are obviously very different vehicles, but it's all about kind of having that communal, out of body, spiritual thing. I just wondered if you kind of talked about that when you were on the road together, was it like a kinship? Uh, well, we didn't need to talk about it really, because we were touring together. Mm. So like, we were doing it and feeling it every night. What we did talk about was all the other stuff that when you connect with people, you know, once you made that love and you made that energy and you come off stage and you're all buzzing, you just connect on normal shit and celebrate life. It was a really beautiful tour. They're just incredible human beings. And like we learned a lot as a business and we learned a lot as humans how to tour and to sustain a sense of family in a very kind of volatile environment. Yeah. Um, but like they're just fucking magic and honest and earnest and like you know they helped us out loads for no reason other than to help us out yeah so it's cool i read that uh james murphy takes a barista style coffee machine with him everywhere he goes as well. no <laughs> it's better than that he used to but now he they pay a local barista and they come in for each town that they play and they come in and pay and set up and make coffee all day, it's fucking insane. <laughs> but it was good, I mean, that single um, really kind of laid the table for the record, as did the ones that followed up, especially like Grace, I mean, that line, no God, no King, love is the thing that kind of comes back and it's a mantra that repeats on mm. monolith. I mean, that's the DNA of this record, isn't it? That, that mantra. Love is the thing is definitely the mantra of the album, yeah. Mm. Um, what I'm interested in with poetry and, and lyrics and stuff is that I kind of, I am succinct in what I'm trying to say to myself mm. and kind of articulate what I'm feeling. And that often comes out, I don't know why, as mantras and repeated phrases that kind of get me through. It does also kind of come about because I write all the songs at the booth. Mm. So there's gonna be some sort of thematic repetition I think being a father and being at a time in 
complete and utter lunacy. <laughs> Think tanks running the country, lies everywhere as reality. Everyone's just apathetic because they're so fucking dead from being lied to that we've just got, we're just under this mental circus. Mm. So for me, it's about ground zero as a human being and a father. I'm going, what, how, how can I sustain a sense of purpose in such fucking psychotic mess? Yeah. And for me, that's going to the basics and fighting for what I truly think is important. If you act with love, if you act with empathy, if you act with compassion, then hopefully you will see that there is no love in voting for the right. It's a loveless act. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, not uh, my, and this is what I'm coming to terms with. My music will not make a difference in that way, other than me. And I, you know, I'm comfortable with that. As long as I, as long as I fucking sleep at night, and I'm doing the right thing for me. I'm cool with that. I'm always going to be a cheerleader, outwardly, you know, because I fucking, I'm lucky. I'm, I, I've, I've been gifted a life that I'm very, very grateful for. So I'm gonna celebrate that, and that's how it comes out in the Tank. Well, that's it. It comes through a doing, not necessarily a showboat. You don't need to stand on a soapbox to just to be good. I mean, it's in the age of social media, kind of everyone needs everyone to have an opinion and to be state the morally obvious sometimes. But you should just live it, you know? Oh, well, I mean, it's social media, it's algorithms, isn't it? What you see is what they allow you to see. You need to remember that. Yeah. It's bollocks. Social media is literally a network set up by people that want you to see certain things and not see others. My reality is the one that I've indoctrinated by what I look at yeah. and what I don't look at. And now, whatever I want, I get, but what I need, I'll never have. Yeah. In terms of information, unless I really seek it out, but social media ain't the one. Well, that's the thing, I mean, Idols have never been a band with like a manifesto. It's not politics with a capital P. It's, a, it's human. It's about being human. I mean, I would say the manifesto is uh, lo like all is love. Love mm. is the thing. I've been saying it from the start. It's about human connection. Mm. That is, if you know, it's the, the fable of the sun and the wind. You can fucking blow as hard as you can and just keep screaming down the fucking the barrel of the gun and it ain't gonna change shit. But if you shine, and you show people compassion, and you listen, and you have an open heart, then maybe that connection will be made. Yeah. But that's, that's just, art and music is like whatever you want it to fucking be. I also like people shouting at me and telling me I'm a prick sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's all important. I grew up on hip hop. I did not live that life. Yeah. But it's important to me, and I fucking love it. Mm. So just, you know, my, my calling is what I'm doing and I'm loving it yeah. very much so, and I'm grateful to be here. And um, that's what's beautiful about this record, really. As we said, there is a mantra, there's an ethos, but you're not, it's not a sledgehammer at home. It's very subtle, it's delicate. It's beautiful, there's a purity to it. I mean... It, yeah, it's, delicate's the word. I, um, since being a father, I've addressed that in my art, you know, because I was a very impatient man, even after sobriety, you know, like learning because I was a fucking nasty bastard back in the day when I wanted to be. Um, and I, I hurt a lot of people and I wanted to stop. And that takes time and forgiveness. And uh, patience is fucking, I found it, but in the most beautiful way. <laughs> like I'm like covered in someone else's feces. <laughs> And they're shouting at me with their hand on their hip. <laughs> We're running late for some fucking thing. <laughs> and I'm like, and it makes me laugh. And it makes, it makes me realize just how fucking silly it is. Yeah, it softens you as well, right? And it shows you that empathy, if you just put yourself in that little person's shoes, you can do that with anyone. And I'm starting to do that, you know? I was very fucking disheartened by post-Brexit Britain, you know? Mm. But then you realise, well, they're all, everyone's been fucking lied to. Been massively lied to. So, like, even that, if they, they knew that they were lies, and they, 
there's reasons for it. There's people there with lives and stories and like, you just got to be more patient, I think. Well, I had to be to kind of understand it. And like, but now I'm like, I'm worried, you know, <laughs> I'm worried, but I'm also like, I'm not, I don't carry that sense of resentment towards uh, decisions, that, you know, are detrimental to free trade. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I like, I've learned from being a dad that to go with things with grace and be delicate and to celebrate the, the small, beautiful things that you can overlook so easily if you're impatient with the world. Yeah. You miss out on a lot of like tiny details that will make your day. And uh, I think it's got to come out of my art because that's how I am. Mm. And I'm enjoying that too. And how would you say that kind of impacted on uh, chemistry with the rest of the band? Because obviously they've got to be coming from a similar place to make a record as beautiful as this with all those flourishes. Yeah, Bowen, Bowen, Bowen and I wrote most of them, like, you know, 99% of the musical, whatever. Um, shout out to the rest of the band. Um, but like, Bowen's very dynamic. He's a lot smarter than I am. He's got a lot more of a logician's brain. He can fucking, you know, pick up things and learn how to use it pretty quickly. And so whenever I pick the theme and I tell him the title of the album and I tell him what the artwork is and, the, and then we discuss beyond that, it's about our discussion, like how it's going to sound, how it's going to feel, the landscape of the album. And he's fucking great at that. You know, he's, he's not like, I'm, you know, he's a lot more emotionally mature than me, which means his bass level is pretty steady. Yeah. So if I'm like, right, we're doing this, he's like, all right. And we build it together and we work together on that level. And the boys are very patient and dynamic and do as we ask. Yeah. Well, you told us once before that um, Crawler was about kind of killing off a caricature of what people might have thought idols were. And really Ultra Mono was. Ultra Mono was, sorry. And then Crawler was about kind of recapturing the essence of it. Yeah. Um, what, how would you describe that essence and like how you kind of pulled the strings of that on this record? Uh, I think it's the same. It's like, best way to describe it is we've always been the band we are now. Yeah. But you can't... The idols we are now, it's like looking at a piece of paper and you picture a building and then you draw it and the building you've drawn isn't what you've got in your head. To get to a point where you can draw on paper what you have in your head, your mind's picture, takes a lot of practice. Mm. And the first three albums were us practicing and also executing things brilliantly. Like Mother is a very succinct song that I wanted to write. And it, that is the building on paper and in my mind's picture and other songs, you know, many songs. But a lot of it was learning and mistakes and, and that's on record and that's beautiful. Um, but then we got to a, a point where we were like, okay, there's a lot of conversation about who we are and that's not up to anyone else. Mm. No fucking person could tell you who you are. That's insane. It's a toxic relationship, right? Yeah. So we killed that. Um, and now we're just exploring again. But the sound of it, I think, is, is us almost like we got rid of that toxic boyfriend who was telling us what to wear. <laughs> and now we're wearing whatever the fuck we want. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah. that's the sound of the last two albums and will be the sound of the rest. And uh, Hopefully one day, we'll have a very succinct entire album that's just fucking... But then we'd have to all drink drink the Kool-Aid and jump off a cliff or something. Yeah. In matching tracksuits. Yeah, or mohair. Mohair tracksuits. You are stylist now. Next video. Shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, we'll never get there. So the point is, uh, hopefully, Idols' albums is the sound of us never getting there. Yeah. Because making it, He's making it. But that's when you quit, when you're like, oh shit, we've made a perfect album. Don't well, <laughs> if, you make, if, you, if you were in, if one, if you think you've made the perfect album, then you should quit. Mm. Not because you've made the perfect album though. Yeah. Um, but start something else, challenge yourself, feel uncomfortable. I think 
you owe it to your audience to feel uncomfortable and to be insular and fucking work at everything you you want to work through. If you're comfortable, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bit boring. Unless you're doing it to like, you know, just sell records and I'm sure that'd be pretty uncomfortable for a different reason. But in terms of the, to go back to the building analogy, what would you say that like, Nigel Godrich and Kenny Beats add to that building? Paddling pool, conservatory, what do they embellish in you that you wanted? Well, I mean, that's a good question. I guess a good producer, I mean, I could go into the analogy deeper if you want. One of them's a quantity surveyor. Yep. And the other one's an incredible builder. Yep. You know, and together they take it in turns to be like, you can't afford that or you're using the wrong material there. That's going to fall down. That's going to fall down <laughs> or, you know, that's shit. That's in, that's, there's no integrity there. You know, this will collapse. Um, what I'm saying is, we'll ditch the analogy. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> quite like that game. <laughs> What's Dev in that analogy? What is he? Plumber. Um, he's the guy outside, doing like the, the fast food van. Oh yeah. Dev is, yeah. Like any good producer is someone that enables the person behind the art to flourish. Nigel's job in his eyes, and rightfully so, he did a great job, was to make, it, make me and, the, and Bo feel uncomfortable and not just sit on what we already know because that's boring mm. and kind of push us out of our comfort zone and forward and Kenny Beats is one of his supreme empowerment incredible craft just like the two of them are very different but both excellent human beings and incredible at their trade they just, they are super dynamic people that work in their field with any angle in a dynamic way to make sure the art, the person behind the art shines yeah. brilliantly. To shine brilliantly, you can't just do the comfortable thing you always do. That's a dull light to shine brilliantly. You really need to go through it to have a grander perspective. You need to be able to see the dark before you can see the light and if you don't know what I'm talking about it's because neither do I <laughs> now I mean there's an amazing line in jungles where you just say jungle where you say I'm found I'm found I'm found at the end of this record it's about to come out how do you feel hot <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that's a prick answer isn't it <clears throat> how do I feel powerful like on what, like, you know, I've got a lot of challenges this year that are very, very privileged. I've got to try and sustain a sense of health, mental health, because I'm touring the world with my best mates. Mm. My brothers, actually, my best mates won't be on tour. <laughs> um, I get to spend quality time with my child and live a very beautiful life. Yeah. But to do that properly, and like any good art, you need to make sure to show gratitude you need to work for that and, yeah. and for me that's a sense of graft yeah so I'm just going to keep working hard and I've got two years of it I'm solid I'm working and I'm not going to stop and you've got to sensibly put things in boxes like I'm a father I'm a performer I'm an artist I'm not a spokesman I'm in this lane I'm thriving yeah it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one my advice would be don't separate. Mm. If you separate, you have this thing where there's, a, there's not a sense of accountability or causality for your actions, mm. i.e., oh, I'm a dad tomorrow, I'm a singer today. It's like, you always, how does that act? Yeah. You know, you, you just have a maintain, this is coming from an addict's point of view. Have a sense of stability throughout and see when I'm on stage, I am the father I want to be. Mm. And when I'm at home, I'm the artist I want to be. And that way, the dichotomy is, is just about circumstance rather than the person splitting yourself up. It's good to wear masks and to be performative and to, to perform well in each arena, but underneath that should be you, solid, and with the same beliefs and the same behavior and the same actions, so as not to be a hypocrite. 
I'm imagining that the new songs are going to add a whole new energy to the live shows. I mean, I saw you at Village Underground and that was amazing. I know you're not fond of arenas, but surely next year you guys got a headline ready, right? It's got to happen. <laughs> Fuck, we, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know. I Do you want it? In your, is it on your, Do I want it? Is it on your list? <laughs> I got, that was the first and only festival I went to for like six years. Headline in Reading would be yeah. sick, yeah. Things like that, you build them up in your head, it goes wrong. Every show is important, but yes, that has a history with me. It would be sick. It would be sick. But, you know, it's that thing and it? it's like, I, don't, I just, I don't like all that, like, museum of musical rock history where you're like, this is where Kurt Cobain sneezed and you're like <laughs> fuck who cares yeah. he didn't care why would I care and like anything like that you know yeah. and like all the, all the great people that I've met who were incredible Kenny Beats Nigel Godrich Dave Grohl um, Taylor Hawkins uh, fucking lots of people that I looked up to Julian Casablancas when you meet them they are, they're like, what's the word? It's not humble, like they know, they're like namaste, <laughs> it's none of that shit. They just like, you know, they work hard. Take and they, it as it comes. Yeah, they understand why they are where they are. They're not like, I don't know, <laughs> this is, oh my God. But they're also like, yeah, fucking, I have purpose, I am working. And, um, so it's cool, like I like that thing where you see people that have just worked hard and stuck to their game and they've got purpose and they wake up still every day with a sense of purpose. And that, it's a beautiful thing to see. So I wanna sustain that myself, which is like, yeah, I'm here because of what I've been doing mm. and I've worked hard for this. So I'm not gonna apologize, but it's weird, isn't it? Like, don't get me wrong, headlining Reading, headlining Glastonbury would be sick, but you, I think I need to get there. Yeah. I don't know if next year's the one. If they really, th it like, you know, it depends on how this album goes. If it's like, yeah, no, we can do it. Because our show, as you were touching on earlier, like the idea of that it's going to add a different, it will create ebbs and flows in our show that will make it more of a journey, mm. hopefully more epic, more of a show rather than whatever else we were doing before, which is a fucking beautiful mess. Mm. With, with an arc, but an arc and like a narrative arc, but not, not like this could be. Um, but you do, you do those, you make those decisions at the right time. You choose when to headline the pyramid stage, you choose when to do it, and you, you, you got to be savvy to that. Yeah. You don't get there, and people have got there, and I've seen it, it's a mess, where they've just been elevated to top of the game, and they're not top of their fucking game. Mm. They don't know how to wipe their ass on stage yet. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. like, it's it's not nice to see, and it's like you know, it's a waste of a headline slot. Yeah, because there's something about playing for two hours in front of a huge audience where you capture it, you capture that energy, because you understand how to unthink and to ignite that combustible thing that is not you. It's not your fucking ego. It's them. Yeah, and it's you together. And uh, that's why, like, Blur at Glastonbury was the best show I've ever seen. Because mm. they, you know, they knew how magic it was. And it wasn't just because of Tender, do you know what I mean? It's because of everything they built and how to fucking capture that magic that is live music. Yeah. That takes a long time. So I don't think headlining that Reading is, is either in or out yet. Yeah. I mean... I don't think they're going to ask us, no. But if if they did, I'd be like, I'd be nervous to say yes right now because you've got to be savvy to the context of where you're playing. I mean, fuck the king. There fuck the go. king. Just stick that on the end. Good note to end on. Joe, fuck the fuck king. Fuck yeah. Fuck Excellent. the king. Cheers. <laughs>